Good evening, this is uh, Meir Javedan for speaking with you on July 23rd at 11.33 p.m. Tel Aviv time. Um, today's short podcast is about a question which I've been struggling with, and that question is, do I suffer from a Persian superiority complex? Uh, it may sound funny to you, but, you know, it's a question that I ask myself, do I, you know, do, uh, do I suffer uh, superiority complex simply because I'm Persian and this is not something that's exclusive to me I'm sure there are other Persians who are listening to this other Turks other Greeks and they ask themselves the question do we think that we are better than other people do we do we overemphasize our importance and I think this is a question which all ethnicities ask themselves um, I think um, sometimes I, I think it's something that happens to all diaspora sometimes they overemphasize um, their roots, uh, because especially those who are disconnected from them. Um, if, for example, I was an I were an Israeli living in Iran and I knew I could never go back to Israel, I probably you know would be the other way around. So I think um, the disconnection with Iran makes you even more sensitive, which makes you um, want to emphasize your uh, your roots and, and your ethnicity and your background. Uh, even more, you overemphasize it. Um, I think another reason, in this case, perhaps for me, um, and I, it may, if you're Iranian or if you're Persian and you're listening, maybe it also you can sympathize with this. I think the overemphasis comes from what I see to be um, compensation for lack of confidence. I think um, I, you know, looking back at Iran's history after, especially after the revolution, there is not a lot of moments to be proud of. Unfortunately, this regime has not done much to to boost the confidence of Ber Persians and Iranians. The way they have, um, the way they have taken the country backwards on on, on many accounts. Personally, um, in my own life, there have been this regime as on very few moments has made me proud to be Iranian, very few moments. Um, I think uh, the, the liberation of the city of Khoram Shah uh, during the Iran-Iraq war, I think that's an unforgettable day. I think this is a, I nearly went down with sugar poisoning that day. I had so many sweets in my neighborhood in Tehran. But again, that I don't think that was because of the regime. Was it? Wasn't it? Well, it's up for discussion, but I think it was the Iranian people who wanted to liberate their land over from uh, that was occupied from Iraq. Um, apart from that, really, what has this regime done? What has this government done? I mean, yes, there are other moments, few moments, and the uh, the 2009 uprising in Iran. But of course, that was against the regime. The the Iran, the victory of Iran against the U.S. in soccer. But again, that wasn't the regime. So you know, I think it's overcompensation for lack of confidence. And you know what? Overcompensation for lack of confidence can sometimes be good. Yep, you heard it right. You could say, why could it be good? Well, let me give you an example. Um, Ahmadinejad's denial of the Holocaust and his attacks against Israel had one good consequence. Now, yeah, you heard me right. It had one good consequence in Israel. What was that? It actually brought out a lot of Persian Israelis out of the closet. You know, Persians, many of them here, they've, they've, uh, absor are absorbed into the uh, Iranian society, Israeli society. You know, they're getting on with their lives. Their parents came here in the 1950s and 60s from, from you know, um, peripheral areas uh, in Iran, um, from some of them from Kurdistan, some of them from Mashhad. You know, they were not, they didn't come here, some of them did not come here with that. They were not really absorbed into Iranian society before they came here. So the ch and a lot of them, the parents could not read and write. Even those who came even fifties and sixties. So you know, the kids did not have much um, to um, to in terms of their per Persian heritage for the parents or the Iranian heritage for the parents to pass on to them. But Ahmadinejad's attacks were so embarrassing for Persians and Iranians all over the world, especially Israel, that those who felt before that they did not have any. Um, need to emphasize their Persian roots and Iranian roots, they felt like, no, this guy is embarrassing us so much that we have to come out, we have to say positive things, because this guy is making us look like, uh, look Iranians no matter where they come from, per and Persians look like a bunch of racists. 
So in, it's my experience that actually this caused a lot of Iranians in order, as a backlash against what Ahmadinejad said in Israel to come out and to emphasize the Iran, their connections to Iran, Persian culture. And since then we've seen absolute boom in this country um, in terms of you know Persian pride and Iranian pride and people coming out and um, emphasizing their roots and their Persian heritage. So, you know, the, the anti-Semitism of Mr. Ahmadinejad and his racism towards Israel inadvertently had a had a good consequence in Israel. We, we saw the rebirth of Persian pride in this country. So, usually, you know, overcompensation for lack of confidence is not a good thing, but on some on occasions it has um, inadvertent positive uh, consequences and and what I just described is definitely one of them. Well, it's 11.38 uh, p.m. here in Tel Aviv. I'm signing off on the 23rd of July 2013.